everybody and welcome back to the channel again and uh, today what we're, what we're going to do is following on from the hardwood softwoods video that I made um, I'm going to now talk about some hardwood softwoods so I've got quite a selection of um, woods here um, about 20 different woods here approximately and we're going to run them through them one at a time and I'm going to basically talk about what I think of each wood and uh, what, what each wood can be used for, its cost, etc. So the first one we have here is just um, is just red redwood, um, sometimes called red pine, but uh, we don't tend to always use that name because it can be different. You know, it's not always pine. It's just it's just dressed w white wood basically, so or dressed redwood. So so we tend to just call it redwood. So this, this particular piece here, this is 8 inches by 2 inches, um, planed, so it's slightly less. Um, sometimes a confusion can actually arise with that because people think that they're buying wood that's exactly 8 inches by 2 inches and that, that is usually true um, in terms of rough sawn timber. It will, it should be 8 inches by 2 inches, it should be the size it says, but with plain timber it's going to go through a planer. So what that tends to mean is that the, 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 the wood will actually end up narrower and thinner. Um, so you might lose, you might lose about s roughly six millimeters on each each side. So really, eight inches, or if we work in metric, um, two hundred by fifty might actually be one hundred and ninety four or one hundred and ninety five by forty five. So that's just just to clear that up, so that there's no confusion with that. Um, so that's plain pine and this particular section of wood that could be used in stair making like for making stairs um, like for the side of the stair um, uh, it could be used for making doors if, it, if you had a big a very big wide door that you had to make um, but basically it's just it's just plain timber that's the most common plain timber and it's sort of um, fairly low cost for for what it is, it's probably the lowest cost plain timber available um, and it is uh, basically native to, to the UK so it's so it's not imported or anything, it's just uh, it's just that it belongs here so it's, um, it's not, there's no high prices for imports or anything like that um, unlike some of the woods here, some of the woods here are specially imported because they're not available in, in the UK um, so <coughs> We move now on to another very common wood, so this is um, oak and this is white oak, there's two main different types of oak, there's white oak and there's red oak, um, so this particular one is white oak and this white oak here is actually quarter sawn, uh, if you watch my video from a little while back you'll see my video on quarter sawn, rough sawn and flat sawn, so this is a quarter sawn board because the grain is almost perpendicular to the face, it's very straight up and down and this actually typically of oak, this produces this sort of if you can see that on the camera, this sort of flecked flecking on the grain, um, these are known as medullary rays um, and that's produced only with quarter sawn timber and it's most prominent in oak so oak is an awful lot more expensive than white wood or redwood, um, it's probably three times the price of redwood. So what's its uses? Well, it's a very hard timber. It's very good outside, so it's very durable. Um, can last for years without even being coated or treated. Um, it's sometimes used for finishings in houses, so it could be used for facings, scuttons, architraves. Sometimes stairs are made from solid oak. Uh, not that common because it's very expensive, but. Um, sometimes they are, and general high quality joinery work. Um, that's the main uses for oak. Um, and similar to oak, or similar looking anyway, we have ash, which is a relatively similar grain. It's a lot, a lot heavier grain, a lot wider grain. Um, but that's an example of a piece of ash. And again, Ash is it's a bit easier to work with than oak. It tends to be easier to plane. Um, it doesn't doesn't split quite as badly as oak. Uh, it doesn't. Um, sometimes oak has a bit of a green hue through it, 
um, just the way that the tree grows. It's sometimes it's a bit of a green or a grey hue through the a natural hue through the grain. Um, that that's just that's just natural for oak. Um, the other thing uh, about ash that, that that doesn't apply to oak is that ash can be used outside as well. But if if we go back to oak just for a minute. If you're using oak outside, you need to really use stainless steel fixings because there's actually oil. There's there's a natural oil inside this, and that makes it durable as well. That adds to the durability, but it can actually stain the wood because if if you don't use stainless steel fixings, what tends to happen is the water or rain can react with the metal screws, and it can actually start to stain the wood. So. If you're using oak outside, use stainless steel fixings. So back to ash. Ash has basically the same properties as oak. It's uh, just about as hard. It's a very hard wood. And it's used for stairs. It's used for high quality joinery work, facings, scuttings, etc. Um, it's about the same price as oak. Um, which is about three times the price of redwood. <coughs> so now we have another... Uh, softwood. So this is hemlock. Um, it's not the best example, but it's the only it's the only one I have. I'll see if I can bring up the grain a little bit, just to show you. So it's a very. Um, it doesn't have much of a a grain pattern really. It's just a little, the little bit that you can see, and that the most common place that you'll find hemlock is stair spindles, um, very often made from hemlock, uh, other than that you won't see hemlock very often, but that's, so that's hemlock and in terms of pricing, well, hemlock is it's, it's somewhere between oak and pine, it's sort of mid-range, it's not, it's not extremely expensive and it's not cheap, it's just middle of the road, sort of, but I don't think it's really that commercially available anyway, it's more as I say, it's more used for manufacture of spindles and handrails and things like that. It's not really readily available to buy. So that's hemlock. Next one is sapele, which is sort of a mahogany substitute. There's many, many, many mahogany substitutes, but this is this is quite a good one. Um, it's quite quite easy to work with. It's easy to plane. It's easy to glue. Um, and it looks looks quite nice. It's got the right colour for mahogany. Uh, well, Brazilian mahogany anyway. Brazilian mahogany, um, at least here in the UK, hasn't been available for many, many years um, due to its rarity and scarcity. Uh, so we use things like sapele and utile, macori, things like that, all mahogany substitutes to, to basically mimic the, the true mahogany. Um, so this is this is about on par, probably just a little bit cheaper than oak. Um, quite quite expensive for what it is, um, but it's a little a little bit cheaper than oak, but definitely more expensive than redwood. But I think it looks okay, and again, similar to oak, you could you, you know you can use this for architraves and uh, sometimes quite often doors, hardwood doors will be made from sapele. Um, and it can also be used for lipping, so so if you had a bit of plywood or block board that you needed to, to face the edge off, you could you could take a thin bit like this and cut it down the middle and you could use that to to finish off a piece of plywood, for example. So that's Sapelli. <coughs> Next one is a a much rarer wood. Um, this is this is a piece of Eki, that's E K K I. And this is actually a, a very, very durable timber, extremely water resistant. This is used for boats, marine work, it's used for docks, um, um, jetties and uh, all, all, all manner of, um, basically, <coughs> okay, so it's used for all manners of docks and piers, um, anything that's even submerged in water, um, that this this is ideal. This this is a very rot resistant timber, and it's specifically for the purpose. 
um, but it is extremely expensive. It's much, much more expensive than oak. Um, this this bit here is probably eight or ten pounds to buy, so it's really very, very expensive. Um, of course, if you were buying it on a big scale, you'd be buying in bulk, so you wouldn't be paying as much. But this is only this is just a small bit that I've got left from a bit that I was I was actually given a few years ago. Um, otherwise, I would have no reason to have this timber. Um, but so that's that's icky. Now we come on to one of my favourite hardwoods, which is teak. So this is a chopping board that I made in one of my other videos, and it's now been finished. That's three coats of work top oil on it, and you can see it has a very nice grain pattern, very nice colour. Um, there is a wood called Iroko, which is a sort of um, teak substitute, because teak is very difficult to find now. This this teak here has been reclaimed. Um, it came out of a chemical laboratory from the 1960s, or a chemistry laboratory from the 1960s. So, assuming that, that it's been in there since then, this, this has probably been dry stored for somewhere around 60 years. So there is no issue with moisture in this board at all, um, so it's not likely to move, even even with changes in humidity it's not likely to move very much, and uh, I think it's a very nice wood, that's why it is one of my favourite hardwoods, especially when it's finished, it comes up so nice, the one thing I would say is it is quite difficult to work with, it's very very sore on tools, chisels, planes, saws etc, it, it will dull blades very quickly, and it can be quite difficult to glue, Sometimes glue doesn't take to it very well, and the other thing worth noting is it is very, very expensive. It's um, probably five times the price of oak, so pro <laughs> so so it's very, very expensive. It's not something you would you would just buy for the sake of. You know, you would have to have a specific project for it. Um, but as I say, I get this, but out of this um, laboratory and it was a big wide piece, in fact I'll just show you the actual piece that it came off of. So here we have this this big piece that this, this actually came out of, so this actually started off about two metres long, this board. Unfortunately there is there are some holes in it which is not, not defects at all, it's just where over the years where things have been screwed into the board or into the bench or whatever. Um, now this board is actually... So this board here is... It's 540 millimetres wide so it's just it's about 21 inches wide. So this is a very very useful board you know it's... Um, you can actually make a very nice bar top with this board. So you could, this would turn into a very nice bar top, if you were building like a, a home bar or a, a garden bar which are very common in the UK at least at the moment, um, you could, you would probably turn this over the other way, slightly nicer on that side and you could plane all that up, sand it all and coat it with oil and you could have this looking like that very easily and I think that would make a wonderful bar top and it would be very durable, it's a very durable timber, um, great outside, it's designed for outside um, and as, again it's got natural oils in it which make it durable, the same as oak, it's got natural oil in it. Um, so that's teak. <coughs> so now I move on to birchwood, it's not, not the best example that I have unfortunately but it is the only piece that I've got. So this is a a rolling pin that I was making on the wood lathe a few months ago and I haven't quite got round to putting it back on and sanding it yet and finishing it off so uh, there really isn't much grain on birch worth talking about it's just for um, it's for very fine uh, sort of wooden items such as uh, wooden balls, wooden beads um, and the likes craft craft objects are, are quite often made from birch, so um, I wouldn't regard, I've obviously made a rolling pin here, I wouldn't regard it as the ideal wood for a rolling pin, but it was really just to see how it turned out, but as I say I haven't had a chance to get um, to finish it yet anyway. Birch is another wood which isn't really, it's, it's, it's not easy to get a hold of, it's sort of, 
Um, it is available, but it's not. You can't just walk in anywhere and get it. It would have to be specially ordered, and the price of it, I would assume, would be somewhere near the price of oak. Um, so again, quite expensive, and really not, not a very, not not a, a, not a, not a nice looking wood, but it's kind of uh, just very very bland. Uh, not much green worth talking about. So that's that's birch. <clears throat> Moving on now, I think a lot of people have heard of this one. This is balsa wood, the softest wood in the world. Um, used extensively in model making, model aeroplanes, model boats, um, just because it's very easy to carve and saw and basically work with. It, it takes a great finish. Doesn't have the best grain in the world, as you can see, it's not not the most attractive grain. Um, but it's very very easy to work with and obviously in terms of model aeroplanes and things it'll, it'll obviously glide because it's so light. Um, having said that though, it, it's you know it's so light but even this piece of wood you can feel the weight in it, it's nowhere near the, the weight of a piece of oak or pine but there's still weight to it, it's not just you know it's not as light as a feather you know. So again balsa wood very expensive. Uh, this is probably three or four pounds for this piece of wood here, so um, probably it's more expensive than oak anyway, and not easy to get in big pieces. It's easy easy to get. It's not hard to get hold of. You can get it in any craft shop or any model shop or eBay, Amazon, etc. But very diff difficult to get in big pieces. Um, this here, this is, I think, this is sixty millimeters actually by 25 millimetres, so it's about two and a half inches by an inch and I think you would be struggling to get much bigger than that. I think you can get sort of like three by three inch blocks and things like that but again very very expensive um, because I don't believe it's a very big tree actually. Um, another Scottish wood actually that, that has a similar property to that, to that is actually you. Um, and use is the very same. It's never ever available in big sections because it's not a big tree. So so you only ever find it in small squares and short lengths. You don't very rarely ever find balsa wood in long lengths. So that's balsa wood. <coughs> and now we have another soft wood but uh, another very very good soft wood but no longer available is piranha pine. Um, so this is reclaimed, this was part of a staircase um, and that was its most prominent use, it used to be used all over the country for for staircases, um, handrails and it used to be that there was no spindles in the staircase, it was actually just lengths of wood running top to bottom and that, so, so the lengths of wood would be like that, so, so it would maybe be like three lengths of wood for example and, and it was nearly always piranha pine. Um, it, it, it moves quite a bit, piranha pine, it, it, it expands and contracts quite a bit but it's generally readily available or, or was readily available in wide boards. You, anytime you come across piranha pine very often it will be in wide boards because that's that's how it was It was cut, it's not often used in narrow sections um, and no need to talk about cost because it's not available anymore. Um, simply, if you wanted to get your ho your hands in this, it, you would ha it would have to be reclaimed. You would have to be going to a demolition company or some somebody who is taking down a property that contained this timber. Um, or if you were to find a house and you were you were doing work in a house and you were taking out the staircase, if the staircase happened to be piranha pine, which uh, I think most of them were at one point in time, um, then you could get your hands on it. But other than that, very very difficult wood to find. Um, I don't. I've even looked on eBay before, and I think there's very few people selling it. Very 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 rare. So it is. Um, now, in terms of so so, I suppose what what could you do with it now? Um, well, it's not really an outdoor timber. Um, as however, it's, it's quite it's quite sore in tools. Again, it's a bit like teak that way. Even though it is a soft wood, it's quite sore on tools because it's very hard so it's so a dull cutting blades quite easily but um, you could make you could make just about any 
you know furniture with this you could you could um you could make boxes or um you know a, a, a tabletop or whatever you can make a you know anything you like with it it's just not uh, it's not available in abundance unless well unless you happen to be happen to get your hands on a, a lot of it it's only small bits like this that you'll you'll come across so that's piranha pine <coughs> This next one is a very exotic timber. This is called zebra wood or zebrano, um, and as you can see, I think the grain looks fantastic. Very attractive grain. Again, very expensive. Um, it is an exotic wood, so it has to be imported. Um, so this is about fifteen pounds for this here, and as you can see, it's really not much to it. It only is about, I think, three millimeters thick. So three millimeters thick by 160 millimeters wide and 345 millimeters long. Um, so this this would only be used for the very finest of joinery work. So this this is like craftsmen that are going to be using this. You know, fine bench joiners. It's not it's not really for anything else. It's so expensive. Obviously, the cost prohibits what it. What you're really going to use it for? You're not going to, uh, you're not going to go and clad your shed with it, obviously. <laughs> uh, so, um, so that's that's zebra wood. Um, again, it's uh, it's almost uh, even when it arrived to me, as it as it plain, but it's, it's it's even more than plain. It's actually so smooth. It's like it's almost like it's been it's been plain twice. You know, it's it's so smooth. You can't even feel any undulations whatsoever you know as it's totally light glass so it is and it's just down to the fact that it's you know it's it is so expensive and it's obviously ju just just the way that the wood is it's it's able to get to, to take such come up as such a high finish you know and um, you can you can get it really really smooth because some there are there are some woods that you can sand and polish and do what you want with them and you will never ever get them dead smooth you, you'll you get them close but you'll never get them dead smooth but obviously this with minimal effort this this can be um, this can be got up to a very very high finish and looks very attractive in my opinion so that was zebra wood this next one is a wood called knob thorn I only have a very small piece of it to show you. Again, very expensive. This over ten pounds for this piece of wood, and this is actually a, a substitute for lignum vitae. Now, lignum vitae was what old bowling balls were made from when they were used to be wood. Uh, almost all bowling balls were made from lignum vitae. So this is just a substitute. Um, it's a very very hard wood. Very very hard. You know, it's much harder than any other wood that we've we've talked about so far and so uh, what's the uses for this well it has pretty limited use um, it's, it's a good outdoor timber uh, but in terms of about this size there really isn't a whole lot you can really make with it um, it's just a sample that I, I, ha I happen to have um, but if you had bigger pieces it would be it would be akin to the likes of the Eki timber we were speaking about, so it would be great for um, marine applications and sort of anything anything where water is going to be a constant issue, you know, anywhere it's going to come into constant contact with water. Uh, this, this would be the type of timber to use. Um, I don't really see much that can be done with this particular piece because it's so small, but um, so that's a uh, knob thorn. Uh, now we have slightly more common timber, so this is cherry, um, just a small piece, I only have this one piece of it, and see if I can bring up the grain a bit more. <coughs> cherry is a type of timber which actually gets, it gets darker as it ages, so it starts off, um, it starts off very light coloured, almost almost sort of like this and it starts to get very deep and rich coloured um, I've seen it going almost a sort of purpley colour sort of ready purple 
after after years and years if you were to install a new piece of cherry in a home that already had cherry that was 20 years old you would find you would never ever be able to match the colours up properly um, so um, so to that end basically cherry is used again for facings, scuttons, architraves um, and any high quality joinery it's, it's about as expensive as oak so it's a, it's a similar um, sort of sort of timber to oak it's a it's a similar sort of thing it's, it's used for the same applications uh, it's not really used outside that much um, I don't think it's maybe that good for outside use actually um, unlike oak and ash but it obviously has a, a different grain um, I've seen to be honest I've seen better grain on cherry than on this particular piece but as I say this is the only the only sample of cherry that I have so um, yeah, so that's cherry. <clears throat> now we move on to maple. Uh, so this is a piece of maple flooring that uh, was down in a gym hall for many, many years, a school gym hall. So that's why it's very dirty on this side. But if we turn it over, we can see, again, maple similar to birch. Um, in term, well, in every way really, because it looks fairly like birch. It's the same sort of colour, same grain pattern. Um, it's it's used for craft items, you know, like we were talking about wooden balls, wooden beads, etc. All sort of manner of craft items, and it's about the same price as um, birch as well. So, but one of its main uses is actually for flooring. If you buy hardwood flooring, now if you buy hardwood flooring, quite often it may be oak, but also um, Canadian maple is probably another very common uh, where you'll commonly see maple so that's maple <coughs> okay so the next wood is wenge wood or wenge sometimes it's called and this is one of my favourite hardwoods, a really exotic hardwoods at least. I really really love the grain on this, it's a very nice colour and uh, very nice grain. And what this would commonly be used for is things like inlay work um, and knife handles. Uh, you could make a knife blade and cut two, two handles out of this and join them together and that would be a knife handle. Um, and that, that's the sort of use because it's a very hardwood, very hard wearing. Um, um, in terms of cost, very very expensive. Um, I bought a piece of this that was sort of like that squared by about twice the length and that was about 18 pounds. So it's a very, again it's a wood that you wouldn't buy unless you had a specific use for it. Um, I've actually made a, a door wedge out of this, that's why it's cut at an angle. Uh, you'll see that in one of my other videos, the door wedge. Um, and that worked out very well. And that, that that would you'd be able to hit that for for the next twenty years, and I'm quite sure it won't split. It's that hard of wood. Um, other than that, very very attractive. I really like it, um, albeit very expensive. So that's Wengi wood. <coughs> the next two I have here are actually the same wood, but just very different uh, colours, as you can see. So. These are both dark red Marante, um, and anybody looking at this, if you weren't sure, you would probably assume this was two different woods. Well, it's definitely not, I can assure you, it was bought in the same place at the same time, and it came actually came from the same timber rack. Uh, and it just shows you how nowadays it's, it's very difficult to, to actually find uniform timber. Uh, you can see how if you were doing if you were making door facings uh, or skirting boards or that and you were going in and picking your, picking your wood up you would have to look through all of the wood and obviously try and pick bits that are the same colour because obviously this is very different from this so if you were to if this was going to be a, a door facing and then you, you start putting that on it well that's if you were doing that for somebody I would expect a complaint um, so it shows you it's even, in fact, it's even darker on that side than it is on this side. Uh, it just shows you how much difference there is. Um, 
I would assume that the difference is down to the heartwood and the sapwood. Um, sapwood is, I think, quite often a bit lighter than heartwood. Um, if I've got that right, but uh, th this is a huge difference, and it's not just that. You can go in and you could find 20 different colours of this same timber. Um, and this is actually sold as a mahogany substitute at the moment. This is uh, this comes under a lot of different names, as I say, dark red Marante. Sometimes it's called Sharia. Sometimes it's called Philippine mahogany. Um, comes under a lot of different names, but I think it's just it is obviously just a cheap alternative. Um, I don't really think it's worth the money, to be honest. It's more um, it doesn't have that great of an outlook. I would much prefer oak or ash if I was doing hardwood joinery in my house, I would much rather have oak or ash than this. Um, this particular piece here does, a, it does look a bit more like traditional mahogany or Brazilian mahogany. Um, but again, there's so many things about it. You can even see here it goes from red to an almost grey colour at the edge here. And you've got all these grey streaks running through it, um, which these are all perfectly, these are all natural things on the board. These are not these are not marks that have been added and this 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 board hasn't been treated in any way, it's not been stained, it's not been varnished, it's not been anything, it's just that's that is just the colour it came out as. Um but I've seen it I've seen it sort of blue coloured, I've seen it green coloured, I've seen it this sort of grey colour. Um sometimes it's white, sometimes it's dark brown, like it is here. It's just so many different colours and it's really, it can be difficult to work with because of that. Um, it's difficult to find two pieces that are the same colour, so um, not not my first choice for hardwood, but nevertheless that is that is commonplace now for hardwood in the UK. If you go into a builder's merchant to buy hardwood, unless you're, unless you're spending good money and buying oak, then this is, this is what you will get. So that's dark red Marante. <coughs> I've just got another piece of maple there, that's actually a, a drumstick, that's a, a little bit better. Um, shows you a bit better than the last piece I showed you. Um, so I actually play the drums um, from time to time, not as much as I would like to, but because I don't have the, so much time anymore. But um, So this is a, a drumstick made from maple, so you can see it really doesn't have much in the way of grain, just very straight grain, although that will be specifically picked out for, for drumsticks. So that they don't break. Um, so that's yep. So that's another piece of maple. Moving on then, uh, we come to western red cedar. Another very durable timber, but very soft timber. This this is a soft wood. Um, although we know that uh, if you watch my last video about softwoods and hardwoods, it doesn't always mean a softwood doesn't always mean that it is actually a softwood. It's it's about wh what tree it comes off of. Um, and it's it's got quite a nice grain. What I love about cedar is the smell, the scent. Um, has a very very distinctive sort of vanilla smell. Um, and this can be used for making moth rings, which I have another video on as well. Uh, so you can cut this into pieces, sand them up, and you can put them in drawers or wardrobes, and you can use them to to repel moths. Um, it's great for cladding. You some especially in the USA, sometimes you will see um, houses that are clad with western red cedar and it starts off this colour here, if um, you can see it's a sort of whitey orange, well yellowy, orangey sort of colour um, or almost a light brown, same on the other side. This, uh, if left outside untreated, this, this will eventually go silvery grey. Um, and and actually actually looks very nice, um, and as I say, the scent is uh, second to none. I really love the the scent of um, Western Red Cedar. In terms of cost, it's it's a lot quite pricey. Um, certainly more expensive than redwood. It's not not as expensive as oak, but somewhere in the middle. Um, so so if you were buying cladding, like you wouldn't, I wouldn't say you would clad a shed with this, but you could certainly clad your house. Um, and it'd be durable, it'd probably last for 50 years without even being treated. Um, it's just a naturally durable timber and again contains oils like oak, like teak, it contains natural oils that make it durable and 
to that end you must also use stainless steel fixings to to attach this to ensure that you don't get rust runs and stains on the wood. So that's Western Red Cedar. And this is, uh, again this is just a piece of dowel rod, it's made from beech, uh, so that's an example of beech. I don't have any other pieces of unstained beech at the moment, so so that's just, you can see it's the, the grain is quite speckled, it's uh, all these little speckles on it, that's very typical of beech. Um, sometimes get it in other woods as well, but most prominent in beech. So beech is not not at all an outdoor timber. Um, should be should be avoided outdoors at all costs. One thing it is very good for um, is chopping blocks and sort of food preparation areas. Anything to any sort of food preparation uh, is is naturally antiseptic. So so it's it's the ideal choice for any sort of catering equipment, any sort of wooden catering equipment. If you buy, if you go into supermarket and buy a wooden spoon, um, there's a good chance it'll be made from beech um, because it is naturally antiseptic. And if you go into a butcher shop, for example, that still uses a traditional cutting block, you'll find that the, the cutting block will probably be made from beech. So that's beech. <coughs> and now we come on to ramen, another hardwood. Um, and uh, spell R A M I N, ramen. And this, the main use for this, this is not available in boards or anything like that. This is just mainly for mouldings and dowel rods like this here. So this is just a, a ramen dowel rod. And if you were to buy small timber mouldings um, such as that, you would get in a DIY store. Uh, they'll probably either be pine or ramen. Um, and that that that's about that's about the use for that. So so that's just a quick look at ramen wood. Um, here's one I didn't really touch on. So this is white pine, as opposed to red pine. So if we look at the red pine again, um, you can probably see that if we look at this knot here, the white pine is a lot more well, whiter I guess, white, whitey brown, whereas the red pine's got more of a uh, more of a reddy brown look to it, the knot. Um, you can see it's a different grain, it's a different grain pattern, it's a different, it's, it's not a different wood altogether, but it's, uh, red pine is probably the better quality of the two. Uh, this is, this is not usually native to the UK, this is usually imported because white pine that's native to the UK generally can't be machined the way that this is. Um, this, is this has obviously been plain smooth and it's had these grooves put in it as well for whatever reason and uh, you would generally wouldn't be able to do that with with homegrown white pine uh, because it would just it would just chew the surface it wouldn't actually you wouldn't actually be able to get it smooth uh, whereas whereas the likes of red pine you can get that very smooth and if you were to go over that with a sander you could certainly get it smoother still. Um, in terms of cost, well this isn't really available in in boards again. The, the main place you would find this is um, CLS which stands for Canadian Lumber Standard uh, which is CLS comes in two main sizes that being 30 by 63 millimetres and 30 by 90 millimetres. Uh, I don't have a bit of CLS right now that I can show you, but basically all it is is, is the size stated and it has eased edges, so the edges are rounded off and it's, it's all the same size, so you don't need to worry about it being different sizes, so it's perfect for framework, for partitions and all that, and you don't need to worry about the sizes of the timber being different. So that, that CLS would be one place where you would find white wood um, and the other, the other main main use for white wood is actually floorboards although they have largely been superseded by chipboard tongue and groove flooring now but occasionally um, sometimes solid wood tongue and groove flooring is sometimes used and more often than not it is white wood so that's that's the two main uses for white wood 
moving on. So this is a piece of Iroko, which um, I didn't actually think I had a piece, but uh, this is a sort of a teak substitute. It doesn't really look anything like teak, but it's counted as a teak substitute, and it more or less has the same properties as teak. The only thing is it is less expensive, um, maybe half the price of teak. Um, it has got a bit more of a yellowy look to it than if we compare it to teak. So you can see even though this has been coated with worktop oil, the worktop oil is pretty transparent so it still gives off the, the true colour of the grain. Um, and you can see there are similarities, um, but this is definitely more yellow um, and this is definitely more brown I would say. But it is, it is a teak substitute and it holds a lot of the same properties as teak. It's still very weather resistant. Um, it contains natural oils, so again use stainless steel fixings. And uh, yeah, it's just it's about half the price of teak, so it's, so it's a good substitute. And generally it's all that's available now. It is very difficult to find genuine teak now without without it being reclaimed you can't really buy teak anymore especially in large quantities so um so that's that's a roco <coughs> and finally we have what's called brazilian cedar um and this is a great wood for working with this is like like western red cedar it's very soft it's very durable um, it's great for planing, great for sawing, sanding, it works so easily. Um, uh, it can be used for quite high quality joinery, it comes up to a very good finish actually. It's not, again, it's not the most attractive grain in the world, but it is very, very, um, very easy to work with. Uh, only thing is it is very expensive. At one point in time this was very readily available, um, because when when the sort of Brazilian mahogany shortage began in the UK, which was, well it was before I was born, but um, when it started this, this was brought in as a substitute for, for mahogany. Um, and even though it looks nothing like mahogany really, it was just, it was, it was a wood that was in abundance at the time. And so there, there is still a lot of it about, but it'll nearly all be reclaimed. You can't really go in anywhere and buy this. Um, it's just, this is just a bit that I happen to have that's been reclaimed. Um, and in terms of cost, well it's similar to Western Red Cedar. If you were to buy reclaimed, um, you would probably pay quite a high price for it. Um, so I hope that sort of clears up a lot of hardwoods and softwoods. That's about 20 odd woods I've went through there. So I hope that lets you see a lot of different woods and see their uses and properties and cost. Um, Usually we just work with, we just stick to simple woods like pine and well as I say we don't really get genuine mahogany anymore but we stick to things like Maranti and Sapelli and Utile and uh, Macori, things like that. So there's all, all different manner of woods that we can we can use, we can build with but um, unfortunately woods just not what it used to be. There's not as many nice woods available anymore and certainly not at the price that they once were. Um, wood is just becoming, or nice nice wood anyway, is just becoming a rarer commodity and we have to pay a higher and higher price for it because of that. Um, so I hope you found that interesting and I'll see you in the next video.